Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, I examine Launcher Space's Rocket 1. So I decided to make this model because for RP2000, I needed more rockets earlier on in the tech tree. And we couldn't just keep using Arabies and Thors as if it was the 1950s. So we need some more modern launchers that people can use earlier on in the tech tree. And this was one of those smaller launchers. And I'll make a small rockets pack and probably some small payloads like CubeSats and stuff like that to add in. And it's ultimately my goal that with RP2000 you can use it with parts that I will make uh, so that you don't have to hunt for a whole lot of uh, different part mods in order to get on with it. <laughs> so anyway, but Launcher One's uh, design that they have on their website, and I'll link it in the video description, uh, was interesting to me because they gave a lot of numbers and had very clear images on the website. In fact, for the engine, they had a 360 degree view of it, which I haven't seen for an engine before. So I was able to make a fairly decent model of it. I mean, it's not got all the things. Uh, it's a copper chamber engine and it basically looks like that from what I've seen. So, yeah, hopefully that's a decent facsimile. They got all the numbers. In fact, uh, perhaps uh, too many numbers because some of them don't quite add up as far as I can tell, but the best way to tell is by launching it. You might have to rotate it. I will link this uh, these parts in the video description. Uh, ultimately, it'll be part of a small rockets pack, but for now it's just got to be this rocket and it'll be that engine, which is unfortunately called Engine 2. So there's the downside to this rocket. Um, the problem is that you're not going to be able to search for the parts in the search field, right? Talk, uh, typing in Rocket 1 or Engine 2 or Launcher is not going to get you any sort of refined results. So... Yeah, you're just going to have to hunt for it in the list. So it's called Rocket 1 First Stage. That's called Engine 2. That's called Rocket 1 Inner Stage Adapter. There's a Rocket 1 Second Stage. On that, there's a vacuum version of the Engine 2. And that's pretty good, actually. It's a worthwhile thing to have. They say that they can get 365 seconds ISP from this kerosene oxygen engine. That's pretty much the limit. That's the highest I've ever seen. Uh, for one. It is a staged combustion engine. Uh, that little pipe is going to nowhere. Might want to tuck this up. Technically, I, I ran it through um, a rocket propulsion analysis light, RPA light, and in order to get the 365 second ISP, you need a nozzle ratio of 200, which is doable. I mean, it would fit inside the fairing, uh, but I haven't made it quite that big. I made about 120. Uh, so, yeah, that is the engine there. And so that's a very useful engine, very high ISP in vacuum. And the payload for just straight out of Cape Canaveral to a low orbit, 200 kilometers, they say it on the website was 773 kilograms. So that's what I've put on here. So that's the payload capacity. Now, where things don't quite add up. First, uh, they say that the diameter is 1.7 meters and the height is 20 meters. Uh, but the images on the website, I held a ruler up to the screen and it seemed to be longer than 20 meters. So if we take a look right now, we're 23.6, so it's not too bad. Um, if we take those off, um, well, the width is a little bit bigger, probably because of the piping. I assume that 1.7 was the diameter of the body, not the fiddly bits on the side. So yeah, we've got some little details here. Actually, uh, this line and that line should line up. So let me just rotate it. Okay, so that's one thing, but the burn times confuse me a little bit. So they say on the website that the, then again, they gave all the numbers I could ask for. Uh, they said that the burn time for the first stage was, it shuts down at two and a half minutes. So we've got two and a half minutes in there. That's fine. And then the payload separation, they said, was at six minutes, five minutes and 59 seconds. Uh, so that technically means that the upper stage burns for three minutes and 30 seconds. But taking a look at the thrust to weight ratio here, um, that's pretty high thrust to weight ratio already. 
I don't really need to have more of a thrust weight ratio. Another thing though is that they said that the total mass of the launcher was 33.4 tons. Now it wasn't indicated whether that was with the payload or without the payload. Uh, I assumed it was without the payload initially, but you can see we're not there. Now I could make the body heavier, but I'm not too sure we'll have the Delta V if I do, because it's got fairly low liftoff thrust because it has only four engines at the bottom. If I had five engines at the bottom, it'd be no problem. I could easily uh, make the, the dry mass of it heavier, but then I'd have to add more fuel. And if I add more fuel, well, uh, if there were five engines at the bottom, the two and a half minute burn time would mean that we could add, you know, 20%, uh, 25% more fuel, 20%, 25% more fuel, and it'd still work out. So yeah, it'd still be a two and a half minute burn time, but there's only four engines at the bottom. I did put a five, fifth slot at the center, by the way, just in case you wanted to add an extra one. But basically, and then it's only supposed to be three and a half minutes up here, but I've got it at four minutes, but we'll see. Um, so can I increase the dry mass of it? Right now, the dry mass is fairly reasonable. Uh, it's about 5% for the tanks alone. That's not including the engines and the interstage and all that business. So tank alone, uh, 5%. We can make it heavier, but the question is whether I'd have enough Delta V to deliver the payload to the required orbit if I do, given that the sea level thrust weight ratio is what it is. As far as I can tell, that really is the sea level thrust weight ratio. They said uh, 22,000 pounds force, and they didn't say it was at sea level, but I assumed it was uh, because uh, in a little diagram, they also said force vacuum 110, so that's what we've got. So that's as it is. They gave the ISPs. They said that it could reignite. Well, at least the vacuum one can reignite. They didn't say the sea level one could, but I gave them both reignition capabilities. So anyway, it's just, just a kerosene oxygen rocket. It's a small rocket meant to lift less than a ton to orbit. Uh, it's for small payloads, but that's good for early on in the tech tree. So that's why I made it. Let's see if I can make the dry mass of it heavier to get up to that 33.4 tons that it's supposed to have and to what extent I can do that. So that's what the test is about. Also, whether we can lift the 773 kilograms up at all. It, they gave other payload capacities for other orbits, like if it was going to a sun synchronous orbit or stuff like that. But we're just going to test it to 28.6 degrees, which is straight out from Cape Canaveral. Okay, so throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition, and launch. Now, because of the low thrust weight ratio, we're going to take our time turning. There is a control core in the second stage. There is not one in the first stage. They didn't mention any reusability aspirations or anything like that. They also did not mention any throttling. They gave a full flow diagram for the engine though, which is impressive. I did verify the numbers in in the RPA light. And actually for a stage combustion engine, they're going for a very modest chamber uh, pressure. Only 1400 PSI. That's fairly low for a stage combustion engine, so it makes me think that they can do it. So there is a question whether I want to have the word launcher and the American flag on the parts for RP-2000. Uh, maybe I should just remove those for the generic... Oh, that's two and a half minutes. Uh, I think maybe we accidentally started a timer early. I'm not sure. Okay, well, we'll go with that anyway. We did have a few extra seconds, but I didn't think it was that much. So there's the vacuum engine. Again, this is probably useful. Uh, 123 kilonewtons here and 365 seconds ISP in vacuum is their goal. And again, they need a pretty big nozzle on it for that to happen. 
Okay, fairing separation. So those go off fine. Uh, the payload adapter is just a procedural ribbed payload adapter. It's not something that comes with the rocket. I did not put RCS on here because they didn't indicate any. I mean, I'm sure it will have, but I don't know what it would be. So keep in mind that you might want to slap some... Uh, you can easily sneak some little spherical tanks in there and add some little RCS ports. So the conundrum is that technically this stage should burn for less time, but if it burns for less time, then we are lighter overall, and they said we were supposed to be 33.4 tons. And this is the highest payload it would ever carry. So... I'm wondering what to do exactly with that information, basically. If I give it less burn time, is, and make the vehicle heavier, the dry mass of the vehicle heavier, then we might not be able to reach orbit with this. It's pretty close right now. It's pretty high thrust to weight ratio near the end. Again, they didn't say it could throttle, so... Okay, well, I overdid it a little bit. It was supposed to be a 200 kilometer orbit, but I couldn't shut it down that quickly. You got four seconds left over, 360 meters per second. I don't think they'd cut it too much finer than that. But we're basically a minute late as far as getting to orbit and getting ready for payload separation. So hopefully the timing is just sort of vague. I mean, uh, not, not quite accurate yet. But, uh, you know, sometimes they give those timing diagrams for the launch in round numbers instead of exactly so anyway but it it sort of works and i do think that this engine in particular is a useful engine so yep i will link the parts in the video description and you can try them out and i uh, people had asked me to do some other launches including skyrora xl uh, and I'll see about a few others that I've uh, been hounded about. No, I mean, uh, that have been mentioned to me. And I'll probably also make some payload stuff. So look forward to that in upcoming videos. Uh, for now, the sun is setting and we will wrap it up. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.